My name is Dr. Paula Prenzi. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Exercise Science and the Lansing School of Nursing and Health Sciences at Bellarmine University. My colleague and co-author, Dr. Manish Kohli from the Division of Oncology at the Mayo Clinic and I, we have a paper coming out in the January issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled, The Effect of Physical Activity on Serum Prostate-Specific Antigen Concentrations Results from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. 2003 to 2006. The objective of our study was to examine the association between physical activity, sedentary behavior, and serum prostate specific antigen concentrations among a nationally representative sample of men 40 and older. In order to do so, we utilized data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey cycles 2003 to 2006. Also, in order to overcome inherent limitations associated with self reported physical activity, we utilize an objective measure of physical activity, specifically an accelerometer. An accelerometer provides unique information on the different dimensions of physical activity, including the frequency, intensity, and duration of movement. Quick background on uh, accelerometry. An accelerometer is typically the size of a pedometer, typically worn at the iliac crest at the mid-axillary line. It generates an activity count in proportion to an individual's acceleration. So the higher the activity count, the higher the acceleration. Accelerometer-derived intensity-related cut points are used to ascertain time spent at different intensity levels as well as time spent at sedentary behaviors, so it provides very unique, um, accurate information on individual sedentary and physical activity behavior. Over 1,600 participants in the study provided complete or sufficient physical activity monitoring data. They wore the monitor for at least four days of at least 10 hours per day. They provided complete data on all the covariates as well as provided data on PSA levels. Overall, our results suggested that as individuals engage in prolonged sedentary behavior as well as less physical activity behavior, specifically light intensity physical activity behavior, they had higher levels of PSA. More specifically, for every one hour increase in sedentary behavior, individuals were 16% more likely to have an elevated PSA level, and for every one hour increase in light intensity physical activity, participants were 18% less likely to have an elevated PSA level. Given that prostate-specific antigen is an extensively used screening tool for prostate cancer, it's very important that clinicians are well aware of factors that influence PSA measurement. It's well established that various demographic information such as age and race ethnicity influences PSA measurement, but our study specifically extends this pre-existing knowledge and shows that independent of these known factors, time spent at sedentary and physical activity behavior may be influencing PSA measurement. So as a result, and based on our findings, we suggest that clinicians take into consideration an individual's sedentary and physical activity behavior when interpreting uh, the patient's PSA measurement. At this point, we don't have a great understanding of the underlying mechanisms that explains the relationship between sedentary behavior, physical activity behavior, and serum prostate-specific antigen concentrations. It's likely a result of exercise and sedentary-induced changes in markers of immune function, markers of insulin resistance and adiposity. Also, uh, given that prostate-specific antigen is an antigen-regulated gene, it's possible that sedentary behavior upregulates this gene and uh, physical activity and maybe downregulating this gene. But of course, future studies are needed to corroborate these assertions. Our future investigative work is going to specifically uh, be examining some of these hypotheses. Overall, though, our study, which comes out in the January issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, suggests that sedentary behavior and physical activity behavior may be influencing PSA measurement. So we suggest that clinicians take into consideration these behaviors when interpreting PSA levels, especially before a complete workup is undertaken. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. 
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.